Lecture 16, Plotting Lines and Planes on the Stereo Net To plot data manually on a stereo net, you will need a hard copy of the stereo net, in our case an equal area stereo net, and a thumbtack. Puncture the center of the stereo net with the thumbtack, and push the thumbtack from the back through the center so that the sharp end points towards you. Be careful not to pierce your fingers. Place a transparent piece of paper over the stereo net and onto the thumbtack. The transparent paper can rotate around the thumbtack. The transparent paper is also known as the overlay. Mark the north, and if you want, the east, south, and west directions on the overlay. We are ready to plot data. Let's look first at how to plot a line. Let's say we want to plot a line with trend and plunge 230. 40. We first mark the trend of the line, in this case 230, on the primitive circle. Then, we rotate the overlay to make this mark fall on either a horizontal or vertical straight line in the grid. It does not matter which straight line you choose, just select one that is close to the trend mark. Then, from the primitive we count inwards the plunge of the line, in this case 40. We rotate back the overlay so that the north mark coincides with the north of the stereo net. The red dot is the line. This figure shows lines of different trend and plunge. A horizontal line with plunge 0 will fall on the primitive. A vertical line with plunge 90 will fall on the center of the stereo net. And inclined lines will fall in between, steeper lines closer to the center, and gentler lines closer to the primitive. Now let's look at how to plot a plane. Let's plot the plane with strike and dip north 40 east, 40 west. First, we mark the strike of the plane on the primitive of the stereo net, in this case north 40 east. We then rotate the overlay to make the strike mark fall on a vertical straight line in the grid. Notice that the strike mark should be on a vertical line in the grid. The plane is dipping to the west. From the dip direction of the plane, in this case west, we count the amount of dip from the primitive inwards, in this case 40. We then trace the great circle passing through that point. Finally, we rotate the overlay back. The red great circle is the plane. This figure shows planes of different orientation. A horizontal plane will fall on the primitive. A vertical plane will be a straight line passing through the center. Planes with dip in between will be closer to the center of the stereo net if they are steep or to the primitive if they are gentle. The stereo net is very useful to solve problems related to planes and lines, for example the intersection of two planes. Let's look at this problem. One limb of a chevron fold is oriented north 23 east, 57 east, and the other limb is oriented north 12 west, 71 west. Both measurements are strike and dip. What is the orientation of the fold hinge? The sketch to the right illustrates the problem. A chevron fold is a fold with planar limbs and angular hinge. The intersection of the limbs of the fold is the hinge of the fold. The first we need to do is to plot the two limbs on the stereo net. These are the two great circles in the figure. Notice that the west dipping limb is steeper and therefore is closer to the center of the stereo net. The intersection of the two limbs is the red dot. This is the hinge of the fold. We then rotate the overlay so that the intersection of the two limbs falls on a straight line in the grid. Conveniently, the intersection is already on the south line of the grid. Therefore, the hinge trends south, 180. The plunge of the hinge can be found by counting from the hinge to the primitive along a straight line in the grid. The plunge is 31. We'll do more exercises like this in class. We will also look at how to solve these exercises using linear algebra and computation. To better understand these concepts, please read Chapter 5 of either Marshak and Mitra or Reagan and answer these questions.